Life's too short to drive boring cars. So people buy their vehicles for many, many different reasons. Some people love the latest, greatest innovation, cars that have some technology that nobody else has. Other people love vehicles with great, outstanding performance. Others like vehicles that are strictly reliable and they don't really care about all the other features. And there's even people that just buy a vehicle, own it, and hope to lose as little as possible so they're looking for vehicles with great depreciation. But if you can believe it or not, there's lots of people that just like a vehicle for the perception that they offer and it makes them look rich, even if they're broke. I'm gonna show you a list of six great vehicles that you can buy on the used car market that makes you look like you've got a million bucks, even if you're broke as a joke. Let's get into it now. So the first great vehicle that's likely gonna make people think that you're rich, and it maybe won't necessarily cost you an arm and three legs to buy, is this vehicle. Right there we have a Lexus RX, and it doesn't even matter which generation, the newer the better of course, but the reality is the Lexus like these often last for hundreds of thousands of miles and rarely need any significant repairs. I mean this one's slightly older, you can tell the front grille, it doesn't yet have that large oversized grille that you're seeing in the newer models, and in a lot of ways, these older ones, people appreciate more because these are the vehicles that blaze the trail for Lexus SUVs. So you've got some awesome projector headlamps, the smaller style grille by Lexus, which is appreciated by many enthusiasts. Now you'll notice it's a little more rounded off, more conventional, more utilitarian, but it's definitely unmistakably Lexus. And right there you've got Lexus rims, and of course, look at these great mirrors. Obviously you've got this nice little strip, not really LED at that time, but look at the beautiful metallics in the paint. Absolutely beautiful vehicle. You've got some really clean looking handles. This wonderful little chrome detail on the bottom just makes it pop. Of course you've got a sunroof, as any luxury vehicle would have, and a nicely elevated ride stance to allow you to cut through snow and ice when the road conditions get rough. And then here, before they start going more vertical, Lexus has a really nicely defined finish where it's steeply sloped here with that great little overhang on top. And Lexus came out with these great and wonderful, almost looks like an aftermarket style tail light, but it's got that clear lens, looks great. And we have an RX350 by Lexus. But the fact of the matter is, these are popular with the gray hairs on Palm Springs golf courses, and many of those people have a lot of money, so there's a general affiliation and association with cash. And of course, if you buy one of these, no one's gonna question whether you have a substantial bankroll or not. And the beauty is, because there's quite a few of these on the market, the prices are relatively affordable, and you don't have to have a CEO bankroll to ride in a Lexus RX and keep everybody believing that you've got money in the bank. Now another little gem that's guaranteed to make people think that you're rich but it won't necessarily cost you a whole lot of money is this little gem. Right here we have the W211 E-Class Mercedes-Benz built from the early 2000s. Now while they're definitely not the most reliable, I would personally go up to the W212 because I was even shopping for one lately. The 212 is vastly improved, better chassis, it holds up better, it less squeaks and rattles, the transmission is bulletproof, so the V6 engine in the 212 is almost bulletproof as well, and there's just overall a higher level of build quality in the 212. Nonetheless, you can get these for little more than a song and a dance and still die dazzle your neighbors with them thinking that you've got a lot of money. But let's take a look at this W211. This is a beautiful example. If you have a look here, usually these cars start to rust. You'll notice rust in there and you'll notice rust in that area. And you can certainly notice rust along the edges of the doors. But this one is an absolute beautiful, magnificent example. So let's take a look. Right there, great Mercedes wheels. And there you've got the big bold tail lights. And this car has one and two exhaust tips. Why? Because it's dual exhaust and it's the E350. So we've got a V6 engine tucked under the hood in this car. Now you've got this great little cool strip of chrome that's going to dazzle your neighbors with that glare and that gloss that comes off when the sun just beads off of it. Mercedes has these great beautiful two-tone handles on the back and the front. It's great. How about this little mirror? Of course you got the bigger strip that was pre-LED and naturally you would have a sunroof as almost any luxury car would have but you'll notice it has this distinctive top end grille on there and because we have these interesting headlights this is very unique to the W211. So you know right away this is the problematic model but nonetheless it definitely looks the part because it's a Mercedes Benz with the fancy grill. This car has every element that you would expect from a modern luxury Mercedes Benz and will dazzle your neighbors. Also has a great sharp pointed front nose on it and some little fog lights. Just to cap off the entire look, makes it look very, very sharp. How about the interior? Classic Mercedes Benz, high quality leather interior and all of the electronics you would expect in a modern E-Class Benz. Oh, but wait a minute, we talked about rust. Here's one. 
look right down there. You can see a little sprinkling of rust just starting on that rear fender. So as I say, these are known for rust, they're known for reliability issues, and they generally just don't hold up that well. Remember that movie Men in Black? Boom, there you have it. So if you want to look like a million bucks, but you don't necessarily want to spend one, that might be a good option. Just note that you're going to spend some money on maintenance. So the next car that you can probably buy cheap that is going to make everybody believe you're rich is... No, it's not that one, that's huge bucks, but it's this. Now the beauty is that back in the E39 generation in the early 2000s, you could get an inline six, you could also get a BMW 540, and you could get the infamous M5, which were all great representations of the brand. The beauty is the brand hasn't changed all that much. Sure, it's grown in proportions. They've changed the engines. For example, in this one now, you can get a turbo four cylinder engine. You can get a twin turbo V8, a 4.4 liter in two different configurations. That's both the M series as well as the 550. You can also get the straight inline turbo six-cylinder engines under the hood. But it doesn't matter whether you're buying early 2000s, late 2000s, 2015, or even now we have a current generation. They all look very, very similar. They're very conservative styling. They all have this relatively consistent look with the two angel eye rings, even though this now has an outer shell to it versus the earlier E39. The overall look is very, very similar with your small butterfly grills and your angel eyes. These cars look great. I mean, look at the front spoiler of the modern day 5 Series car. It looks very aggressive and many 5 Series cars always had a very strong front end to them, just like this car here. There you've got a little additional accents which stand it out from the 3 Series. And you've got some of the extra add-ons like you have here and here. Often some of these parts you don't find in the 3 or 2 series cars. And you've got some great wheels by BMW. But you'll notice you've got sunroof on top, which is classic for a BMW. And this one's X-Drive. Now, that has changed. Not every BMW is available with all-wheel drive. Most nowadays certainly are. And this is the 530. So this is a four-cylinder turbo engine. Makes about 255 horsepower as a base engine. And you can step it up from there. And you've got one and two exhaust tips on this car and a great stance just look down the line you've got these great lines that run the gamut of the car here and then you have a strong hood if not slightly conservative the overall essence of a 5 series is large luxurious and somewhat conservative because a lot of people buying upscale cars have upscale tastes and often are a little more conservative but the point being the 5 series is popular amongst executive ceos and people with substantial bankrolls the bottom line is the youthful buyer typically isn't buying these they want the smaller they want the hot it up 2 series they want the hot it up 3 series so they usually skip on the 5 series so as a second buyer or third owner you can get these for a song and a dance depreciation hits the five and the seven series cars absolutely horrendously so you can get a relatively late model car three years five years old ten years old that looks like a relatively modern day bmw if it's been well maintained and you can do it all with a relatively minor bank account to dazzle those squawky neighbors that like to talk the bmw 5 series now the next car to likely impress your neighbors, your boss, and your co-workers, as well as the king and queen of England, is a car behind me here, and what we have is a Jaguar XF, right here. Before we get into the details, let's take a quick look. All the modern day Jaguars have these great little decals on the front, and of course at the front you've got the newer style, looks very similar to the XE model, but the XF is more mid-size, as this is comparable to an E-Class Mercedes and a 5 Series BMW. There you've got that cute little kitty just purring away. And you've got these awesome headlights, and a pretty decent looking front end, nicely styled, great little chrome accents, and an aggressive front spoiler that just blends luxury, refinement, and performance. And then you have some great wheels, although this one looks a little clapped out and worn out, with some road rash. And then you've got a very basic looking rocker panel, slightly beat up from stones. Obviously this car has been down a lot of gravel roads. And you've got the full glass panel on top, which just makes it very nice, luxurious, and allows for a lot of illumination inside the cabin. Front hood is very impressive, as you'll notice. It has a bit of a bulge to it, and that looks very strong and menacing. And the side is slightly bland, if not a little bit on the conservative side. But with all of this great chrome trim around the windows, it's sure to just highlight and accentuate all of the great features on these cars. And you'll notice it's an XF with these great little tail lights on the back end and that cute kitty once again. But you'll notice it's a 35T and it has two exhaust tips. And these vehicles had a variety of engines. You could get a couple of diesel options. You could get a V6 supercharged. You can get a 4.2 liter and a 5 liter V8 engine. And there's a base 2 liter turbocharged engine that makes about 300 horsepower 
available in this vehicle as well. You could either get an eight speed, six speed auto, depending on the years, generation, and the drivetrain that it's attached to. But the beauty is because of the depreciation, the fact that many second or third owners aren't really interested in this car as it's slightly less performance than you'll find in a five series, it depreciates hard. As a matter of fact, in a five year time frame, it loses about 61% of its original value and starts at about 64 grand. And after five years, it's only worth about $24,000, making it very accessible to a lot of people without that luxury car dollar. But because it's a Jaguar, guaranteed to impress any of your friends. The Jag XF. And the next vehicle guaranteed to dazzle the pants off anybody that you're looking to impress is the Porsche Cayenne like we have right here. In 2002, they came out and they had a whole variety of different engines, a 3.2 liter V6, which is the VR6, essentially robbed from the Volkswagen lineup, different intake manifold, but there was also a 3.6 liter V6, four and a half liter, and the list goes on and on. There was also diesel engines. Throughout the different years, you had a Cayenne, Cayenne S, Turbo, Turbo S. You even have hybrids, GTS models. There's lots of different variations for your budget. And the beauty is buying them slightly used at about $100,000, you can assume about a 54% depreciation after five years based on Car Edge website. That makes these cars very attainable. You don't have to buy that brand new Cayenne to dazzle people. Buy one that's three or five years old, that's well maintained with reasonable K's and guaranteed you're still gonna enjoy the essence and the fun and dazzle those neighbors of yours. But here, let's take a look. Here we have a Cayenne, as you can see. They've always been a little bit on the dressy side. Now, there's been a different issues depending on the engines and the drivetrains. Earlier vehicles, you had some coolant mixing or leaks, intake manifold problems, suspension-related issues in later ones, settling problems here in the rear. But overall, a fairly sturdy vehicle. But take a look here. We've got some great little chrome along the side or brushed aluminum and some Porsche wheels right there with red calipers. And talking around here, you can tell this is the bigger, more powerful front end. This looks to be the turbo, and let's take a look. Cycling around, you've got a basic looking mirror and lots of glass on top to enjoy all the light inside for all the little hooligans hiding out inside the cabin. Of course, here you've got that little overhang, almost like every SUV today. But there you go, it's a Cayenne Turbo, as I predicted, because the front end on these is the dead giveaway. Here you have one great set of exhaust tips and a tow hitch so you can haul your boat to the cabin and another set of exhaust tips. So here we are, fast, fun, and furious and all of the luxury that you could possibly ask for in a modern day SUV. So if you want to impress your neighbors, a Porsche is always a good place to start. So the next car on my list to guarantee to make you look rich because there's no denying it. A Porsche 911 is never a cheap proposition, but here we have right here, a Porsche 911, but the 996 generation specifically. So here we have a 996 Turbo. This is the last of the split case GT1 style engine. This is arguably one of the best Porsches in history, particularly with the turbo engine. But what gives away this generation? This is the 996, and exclusively this is the model that holds low values right now, which means you can get some phenomenal cars at some great deals. But what gives this away? Well, this is the turbo. These hold a little higher value. These are now creeping up to forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars to get your hands on one. But considering this one hundred and sixty thousand dollar car when it was new, Canadian dollars, that's good value. But better yet is the Carrera. And what gives these away? Well, it's these headlights. So a lot of enthusiasts hated when these headlights came out. Porsche brought these in, and you'll notice it has this little kidney extension, and the real Porsche enthusiasts were hating on those headlights, and that's what absolutely destroyed the credibility for the 911 brand back in 1999. But looking down, so here you look at great little mirrors, slightly aerodynamic, simple little handle with the external door lock still, and you've got the turbo vents, because it's a turbo to allow for air and cooling for the engine with forced induction tucked under that hood right there. As you can see, we've got a turbo, and it's got one exhaust tip there and yet another one. You've got some vents and those great little tail lights has a little sunroof and a great basic interior. Now you can get the 996 Carreras and the turbos both in the Tiptronic automatic transmission or the manual six-speed gearbox, which I would personally recommend. Go with the manual. The Tiptronic wasn't as good as the current generation PDKs, but whatever works for you. The bottom line is the 996 is such a phenomenal buy because Porsche went with the slab sides on the Carreras. They did away with some of the flair that the older cars had and with those headlights meant a lot of people didn't want the 996. 
Then on top of that, the Carrera had issues with the IMS bearing. So be sure if you're looking for one of those, you shop around, ask the question, has the IMS bearing been changed or addressed at least? And to top it off, the Porsche's interiors weren't quite what they were back in the 993 outgoing 911, so that also hurt the 996. So resale values are in the toilet. That ultimately means you can get a phenomenal buy on a used 911 and still look ultra rich without having to spend the dollars. Believe it or not, I've seen 911 Carreras on the current market for as little as $18,000. That's right, for a car that was over 100 grand brand new, phenomenal deal. Now the turbo is a different animal. It has a different engine. It has a dedicated drive sump engine split case gt1 engine truly bulletproof the carrera integrated dry sump not as rugged not as robust and again all those other little nuances means the enthusiast didn't want it they didn't want it for the track and they just didn't want to have it at all but if you want a fun car that still handles great sounds great and you can look rich doing it the porsche 911 996 and with all of that said be sure to click on that video right there five great vehicles that are going to last at least 300,000 miles. Hope to see you on the next one. Catch you real soon. Bye-bye.